Hello, this is Cindy. Welcome to my channel and to the incredibly confusing world of book terms. Today we're going to take a look at these 14 terms, and I'm pretty sure this is not a comprehensive list. In fact, as I was making the list, I started with 12 terms. I'm up to 14. But what do these terms mean? What are the differences between and among them? That's what we're going to talk about today. I will tell you there is an index in the description box, so if you want to refer back to one of them or skip ahead to one particular uh, definition, you should be able to easily find it by using the um, index in the description box. And feel free to share this video if you are a part of a group or if you are having a discussion with someone and you want to talk about a particular term. What's really kind of cool and kind of annoying is that we are in a stage of flux. Language changes. It adapts. It, it We make language do what we need it to do. And so some of these terms are in flux because we don't quite know exactly what we want to call it. We, we don't really have a word, so we grab an old word and we adapt the old word, but then it doesn't really mean what we mean it to. I love language. I've taught English for over almost 40 years. I love language. I love how we use it. But it can be confusing when you have so many different pieces here. So defining our terms for where we are today is really kind of what I'm making an attempt at doing. And you're going to find, I'm, I'm checking my notes here, you're going to find that we have a lot of different meanings for a lot of different, a lot of these words. So we're going to start with the first one, glue book. This has more than one meaning, and I'm going to discuss two of those meanings. For the moment, I'm going to move that aside, and I'm going to talk about Carrie the Crafter's definition, which is perhaps the simplest, and that's a book or a place where I'm sticking things down. A place where I'm sticking things down. For Carrie and for others, it's as simple as that. It's an umbrella term and it can include um, a planner, um, a collage book, any book in which you use glue of any sort, whether we're talking about a glue stick, whether we're talking about Fabri-Tac, whether we're talking about our glitter glue, doesn't matter what kind of glue we're talking about. You're using glue to stick one piece of paper to another. That's the very basic definition of a glue book. Uh, Shelley Clammer narrows that definition to a diary of what inspires you. And we're going to talk about diary in a little bit specifically. But her definition of a glue book is that which inspires you. She sees collage as something totally different. And we'll talk about collage in a bit as well. That's down here. Um, but then there's Diane Hubert from Pretty Pink Cottage who sells what she calls glue books that are books filled with blank pages with no embellishments so you can create what you want with die cuts, with stamps, with images. And the purpose of those glue books is not written journaling. It's not even drawing. The purpose is to create using the cutouts of your choice. So those are three different definitions of glue book. I have my notes over here because if I don't have my notes, I'm not going to remember what I want to say because Marguerite Miller on her blog, I think has the best definition of a glue book. And I'm going to, I'm going to read this one. A glue book can be made from anything. And she agrees with Carrie here. It becomes a glue book when you start gluing things into it. So her, to her, collages, collections of things like wine bottle labor, labels, ticket stubs, photos. She asks the question, does it need a purpose other than to make you happy? And I really like that purpose. Does it need a purpose other than to make you happy? And I'm pulling out one here that, to her, this is a glue book. These are all the movies that we have seen since... What year did this one start? 2018. I have another one that goes back earlier than that. Um, of course, you get to 
on to 2020 and pff, the world stopped. We saw a couple of things. We saw two movies in 2020 and that was it because of the pandemic. So that to Marguerite Miller is a glue book. A smash book is um, all of these, these, by the way, uh, everything I've talked about so far is synonymous with the word smash book. It seems to be another umbrella tour, uh, umbrella term that is used to describe everything that I've already just talked about. Anything where you are taking stuff and putting it, smashing it into a book. I have not been able to find a, an etymology on smash book. I don't know where the word originally came from. Uh, I have not been able to find that information. Glue book seems to have been around for decades. So, but there is one other type of glue book, and that is this kind of a glue book. So, uh, Gail Gustinelli also uses a glue book this way. And calls this a glue book. It's a, a book on which you glue stuff, where you put something down and I got a, you know, I put it here, I flip it over, I add glue to the back of it while it's on here so that I don't get any glue on my mat or on my table. To me, this was the first time I heard the term glue book. And it was actually a book that they were using, a, a, a fiction book, and they were using those pages. And I thought, I don't want I don't have a page. I don't have a book that I can rip up like that. So I do have this Dick Blick catalog. And so I started using it. It was, uh, it's 504 pages. I'm on 495. It's almost done. But I do have a Uline catalog that will be my next glue book. So what I will do is when I am gluing things into my other journals, I use this to put the put it down on here to protect my table. So that's another term for glue book. All right. Where is mud? That's glue book and smash book. Artist's book is something entirely different. An artist's book started with William Blake because he was a publisher, as well as a writer, as well as a poet, as well as an artist. And really the term artist's book, and notice it, it apostrophe S, so the book belongs to the artist. Remember your grammar. This is an, a book that belongs to the artist. And he wanted to integrate all of those different pieces together, the poems with the artwork, um, with the font style of the of the piece, all of that he wanted to work together. And so he created what we now refer to as artists' books. Um, the term has broadened in the intervening ye years. Daisy of Daisy Yellow Art uh, sees artists' books as having a focus on creating self-expression rather than having a particular end result. These are books that are specifically meant for the artists. They are they may be published, they may not be. Um, a lot of times an artist will use an artist's book to explore a theme or maybe explore color or a concept. They can be doodling, drawing, painting, collage. Uh, imagery and color become very important components in artists' books. I don't create artists' books. I don't. I see myself as an artist of a different type. Um, I don't draw. I don't paint. I do create scenes with words. I am a writer, but uh, that does not. I don't make an artist's books, so I don't have one here to explain to you. Um, altered books. Altered books is taking an existing book, taking out one, two, 18 pages, or in this case, all of the pages, and you reuse those pages as something else as you're working, or some people even use them as glue, book, glue books or glue pages, and new pages are added. So for me, this is my idea book. 
and I have taken out all of the pages and I have put in two new signatures. So this is an altered book. It is not the same as it was when it started its life. It is now something completely different. So that's an altered book. All right, I, I set these next pieces off because these are gonna be quick. So let me turn my page so that I can see what I'm doing here. These are pretty static definitions. These terms have changed over the years. Uh, they what a glue book started as versus what it is now, and it's a it like I said, glue book is an umbrella term, but it's also a term in in transition. Smash book seems to be a relatively new term. I'm not so sure on that. Artists books have definitely changed over the years, and altered books seem again to be a fairly new concept of taking out the guts or taking out whole sections of existing books and putting in new sections of your own. That also seems to be fairly new. These, however, have very specific definitions and they, the definitions have not really changed much. So let me start with a bullet journal. I have a bullet journal here. I don't use it. Bullet journals were developed by Ryder Carroll and it has very specific sections that you create as the uh, well, as, as the owner, uh, there, it, it is a specific organizational method. There's scheduling, to-do lists, brainstorming, collections. You might put logs of what you have done. Um, it's a way of organizing your life. It has an index or a take, sorry, a table of contents at the very beginning. Some may put an index in the back for specific pieces but mostly it's a table of contents. They're often color coded. This one has grid lines. Sometimes they just have little dots. Uh, and you might hear the term Bujo, B-U-J-O, that refers to bullet journal. So those are pretty much, um, that's, that's an entire, I would say almost a philosophy. It's a way of organizing your life. And uh, there are a lot of people who swear by it. I can't do it. It's too organized for me. I'm a little bit sloppier than that. So that's a bullet journal. A photo album. Now, this one, I just grabbed an, um, a photo album that this was my mom's. And she took pictures or had picture, put in pictures of different things that were going on. These are, you know, my daughter. Um, and she captioned a bunch of them. I really like having this because it's all in her handwriting. So that's all of, these are pictures of my daughter when she was a, a baby, you know, and she put a bunch of stuff. So that's a photo album. A photo album is primarily photos with maybe the occasional caption. That's all it is. There isn't anything else really fancier to a photo album than that. It's a collection of photos. A diary is different. A diary and this is from 1964. This was my husband's grandfather's diary. Since this is uh, releasing, this video will release on June 7th, I thought I would go ahead and read June 7th. It's very hard to read his handwriting because he does not use punctuation. He does not, he capitalizes intermittently whenever he wants to. The number at the top, 65, that was the temperature. On the 6th, it was 74. On the 7th, it's 65. Got up, 8.30, had BF, that's breakfast. And we went to 12.15 Mass. Then we went for a ride over to Bill, then Eva's, uh, to Clyde and back home. Clyde is a, a local town, so they went up to Clyde, and then they drove back home. Dave's family come over. And Paul and Jay come over and had dinner with us, and we gave Johnny $1. I wrote a letter to Norm and Bunny. We went and done our washing and got back home 10 o'clock, had a lunch, and going to bed early. Archie told us that Jerry's baby is in the hospital with pneumonia. And that's it. When he got to the end of the page, he stopped writing. 
when he goes to the next page, it's another day entirely. So that's a diary. It's a, it's a, this is what we did. And I love the fact that, you know, this is in 1964. It's not in very good shape. You can see the binding here. I will never take it apart. Uh, it is just, and I am in the process of trying to transcribe a few of these. I've done a couple years already. Um, I'm working on 1957 at the moment. But sometimes he used a different color pen. But that's what a diary is. A diary is simply, this is what I did on this particular day. A clipping book is something that really doesn't hardly exist anymore. A clipping book was a, a, a book in which you put specific pieces of information out of the newspaper or out of magazines. This is a clipping book, by the way, that's my husband. That's Larry Woodhouse, who has since passed away. But yes, they are in the fact, in fact, sword fighting. Um, but she would put in here, this is my mother-in-law's. That's me, if you can believe it. That's my husband and I. We owned our own theater company for a while. But she would go through, and these were all children or friends of hers. And so a clipping book is just simply clips out of the newspaper. This is an art that is dying, mostly because a lot of people don't have, don't take the newspaper anymore. If you don't get the newspaper, you're not cutting things out and, and doing books of this sort. So clipping books are something that are, or clip books are something that are going out of style. A sticker book, I don't happen to have a copy of. I looked around. I My kids used to have sticker books when they were kids. You'd get stickers and you just put them in a book. Uh, Lisa Frank was a big um, sticker book uh, thing that my kids used to get a lot. And Sandy Lion. Um, I don't know if little kids still do sticker books. If they don't, they should. They're just a lot of fun. Um, I had chloroforms when I was a kid, which was a type of sticker. And... Um, Anyway, the sticker books are, are uh, I don't happen to have a copy of, of a sticker book here. Okay, so now we are going to take a deeper dive into some of the more controversial terms. This, I've seen some pretty nasty fights in some of my groups over the definitions of some of these terms. I am not kidding the comments can get vitriolic. So we're going to talk about some of these and what they really mean. So let's start with scrapbook. I'm going to pause my video while I go get one. Okay, so this was my very first scrapbook ever. It's in a very old, beat-up notebook that is falling apart. That's just why it is in this particular bin. I didn't have paper. I wanted to, I collected postcards. This is 1970 from places that we went. Some of these places no longer exist. Fantasy Island has since closed down. And I wrote a little bit about where we were and what we did. So that was my scrapbook. It was simple. I did it every time. My father allowed me to Plymouth Rock. My father really allowed me to do a lot of this journaling, some extra pieces that are there. That's a scrapbook. I have some older scrapbooks that I really wanted to show you, but I can't put... They're buried in my attic behind a bunch of other boxes, and so I, I did not dig them all out. But I have, from when I was born... Back, way back in 1957, because I'm freaking old, um, my mom kept all the cards that she got for my birthday, for, for a literal birthday. Congratulations on the girl, new girl, congratulations on the birth, all of those. And she put them in a scrapbook and they were, it's a large scrapbook. Um, it's really cool. In any case, that's a scrapbook. A scrapbook is where you keep memories. A scrapbook and a yearbook are very similar. 
Now we know what yearbooks are. If you are, if you've gone to high school in the United States, you know what a yearbook is. There are, you know, it's it's a collection of things that went at, went on that year in the school. There are pictures of everybody who's in it. There are um, uh, pictures of all the sports teams and all the art clubs, and you know, all of the events are documented. But there's another type of yearbook, and this is my yearbooks. I have a yearbook from nearly every year. This particular yearbook is from 2007. And I put in it the calendar because in our family, if it's not on the calendar, it doesn't exist. So we kept calendars of everything that was going on. So I put the calendar in here for that year. I also, when my mom passed away, my dad said in her desk are all these calendars. And I don't know what to do with them. I think I'm going to throw them away. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I want them. And so I have my mom's calendars. She's put right on it. Keep with all of their appointments and things that they did as well. So those, I suppose, are a form of diary, but in calendar form. And then throughout the year, these are all the things that were going on. You know, my aunt did drawings of my children in 2007. Um, yeah, my husband directed La Cage a Faux. He directed a show at DeSales. He directed Children of Eden at uh, Newark High School. So, and then any cards that we got go in the back. And of course, Santa always writes a letter to the kids. So there are, you know, thank you notes are there. Santa's letter is always there. So that is a yearbook. It's a type of scrapbook, but it's also a yearbook. It's important to remember with scrapbooks and with yearbooks, these are meant to be shared. The purpose differs on these, no matter what they look like, no matter what their size, whether they are enclosed in plastic or whether they are 12 by 12 fancy um, pieces. Scrapbooks and yearbooks are meant to be shared. They're meant to be pulled off the shelf and leafed through in, in future years. Um, I have seen some absolutely beautiful scrapbook pages dedicated to a single photo. And then I've seen entirely entire scrapbooks filled with cards from an event, like the one my mom made for my birth. Um, basically what, what these do is they organize pictures and memorabilia that are preserved not just for yourself, but for future generations. My kids will be able to look at this and say, okay, in 2007, this is what my parents were doing. This is what my grandparents were doing. This is what we were doing because my both my kids lived home in 2007. So it's a, a record for the future generations. You keep mementos. Okay, the easiest way to describe it, scrapbooks and yearbooks tell a story. They tell the story of that particular year. A scrapbook might only tell a particular moment, like my birth. You know, it, it dealt just with that moment in time but they are meant to be shared with others. All right, I think that's all I wanted to say about your book, scrapbooks. I'm checking my notes over here and making sure. Okay, I said I would get back to collage book. We're back to collage books. All right, this is my collage book. Um, I've been doing the Marguerite Miller challenges. And as you can see, I am, you know, it is what it is. But this is a book dedicated solely to creating collages. The purpose of these collages varies from person to person. For me, the purpose of my collage book is to figure out how to do collage, is to, to kind of figure out what the heck I'm doing with all of this. I don't know if you've seen this one yet. Yeah, this is 2020, uh, 22. This one just went out. I haven't done any since then. Um, some people might be using these collages to capture a feeling or a moment in time, what they were doing at that point. Some might be exploring composition, which is kind of what I'm doing at this point. Um, you may be doing a collage of images that you picked up on vacation. So it's a vacation collage. 
they really have a lot of different purposes. But most people agree, not everybody, but most people agree that this is a type of glue book that fell out. That one's not glued in. That most of these are simply different pieces that are glued in to a page. So we kind of go back to collage book, goes back to glue book, goes back to smash book. All right. So collage books, I to me, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. All right, just closing that back up. Let me set that one aside. Now, handmade journals. There are as many different types of handmade journals as there are books. And I'm gonna show you a couple different kinds. So this is a handmade journal that my niece made for me. I haven't written in it yet. It's been sitting on my shelf. It is simply blank pages with a cover that she made and then she did the Coptic stitching. She was taking a course on book binding. She's since given me her textbook so I can learn how to do that type of stitching. I have not even begun to attempt it. It looks complicated. If you've done this kind of stitching, make sure you put a comment in, in below. But that's a handmade book, a handmade journal. This is another handmade journal. I picked this one up in Mexico and I bought it because I absolutely loved it. It is handmade paper here for the binding. And then the pages themselves are just craft paper. And again, a piece of handmade paper wrapped around to make the piece here. And then it's sewn together with just a little bit of twine. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> and a stick over the top for decoration that's, that's put into it. I just, I love this one. And a picture of Frida on the front. Frida Kahlo. So that's another type of, ho of handmade journal. This handmade journal I kept in its sleeve. This is by Spirited Crafts um, at a Nancy Hazard in Syracuse, New York. This takes what would I would normally consider to be just a regular journal, but they have completely changed the cover. They've put a fabric cover over the top of it and then put in new fly leaves and added some pages to it. So this is another type of handmade journal. I got another one for you. This is also a handmade journal. Now this is spiral bound. This is bound more traditionally. This was bound with a Coptic stitch. This was bound with something else entirely. So bindings don't matter. The biggest, it's basically handmade journal is a catch-all phrase used to refer to any journal of any type or purpose that's been made by hand rather than by machine. Let me say that again. It's a catch-all term to refer to any journal or any that has any type of purpose. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any journal or any type of purpose that has been handmade rather than made by machine. So they can be blank pages bound together, which is what this one is. This has pages from a book, from the, the book of the Christmas Strangers added into it but the whole story's not there. Um, these are all handmade journals, but so are junk journals. And this is where the vitriol generally starts to fly, as in what constitutes a junk journal. Originally, junk journals were made only from found pieces junk mail that you might have otherwise tossed, um, pages out of other pieces, you know, just whatever you happen to find, pages out of books that are falling apart, ledger pages out of ledgers that are falling apart, you know, anything, magazine pages. People saw themselves, people who create these see themselves as recyclers. They're 
making so something out of stuff that would have been thrown away. That's the original version of a, a junk journal. That has evolved and broadened into the digital kit with store-bought ephemera or pre-made ephemera. This is, you know, this particular piece is pre-made. I didn't, I put it together, but I didn't design this. I didn't make it. It's, it came and I just kind of assembled it. So the purpose of a junk journal varies. And this is where, again, where some of the argument occurs. Some create their own journal for the purpose of decorating every single page. They want every page to have something on it. You know, in this case, I put a pocket um, with a collage. So I'm using collage book. I'm using a journal pocket. You know, this is where the arguments happen. Because to me, that's fine. Other people want more of the blank pages. They don't want so much writing on it. This is to them is anathema. They want more like this. Because for them, well, let me go, let me go back to the decorating every page for a minute. Okay. So they create their, per, their journal for the purpose of decorating every page like a collage book. For those artists, the book for it, the book is for them. This is not for publication. It is not to be sold. It is a book that they are creating. It's closer to an artist's book in that they are creating this book and decorating this book for their own purposes. It is personal. Um, they may share a page or two with the world on a, on a blog or something, but they're not sharing the whole book. They're not sharing their writing if they've written in it. They're not sharing their memories. It's personal. It's private. And so the purpose of a junk journal is to take something that would otherwise have been thrown away, create something beautiful out of it, and then keep it. It's not for anybody else. It's for them. That's one school of thought. For others, junk journaling is for writing. There's spaces to write, lots of spaces to write. There's journaling cards, tags. Um, there are places for hidden hidden writing. You can put it, uh, I, in fact, I did one right here. There's a tag right here. You can write on it and then put it in there and then nobody can see it. When they open up the journal, if other people see this journal, and I can't get it back, here it goes. If other people are seeing this journal, that's hidden. Nobody's going to just by accident read it. They have to actually pull it out and see it. So that's hidden journaling. Um, so tuck spots, journal cards, tags are provided for places like that. The journals, again, are often private and not meant to be shared with the world. I make these, I sell them because... Other people want to use them for their writing. This is not one that I would write in. This is one that is for sale for other people to write in. Clear as mud. So a junk journal can be a collage book. I mean, I can use this book as a collage book if I want. I could use the handmade one, or the one that's, this is a uh, part of a journal that I am making that is, um, it, it is in process, um, that will be made of nothing but junk. There could be nothing new in here. It has to be something recycled from something else in every case here. So no matter what it is, it's all been recycled. This is from a digital kit. So whether I'm using this as a, whether whoever buys this uses it as a collage book, an arts book, a glue book, a smash book, even a scrapbook or a photo album, the purpose varies. The term junk journal, as it was originally made, was simply the materials it was made from and has nothing to do with its purpose. The purpose of a junk journal, the purpose of a handmade journal, those vary. It really depends upon how a person chooses to use them. So there we go. 14 terms. Some of them the ones in the middle, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. The ones on the top and the bottom, 
are in flux. It'll be interesting to see over the years where these go. Sorry, the fire horn just went off. It doesn't mean anything. It just means it's going to be loud in my, uh, in my video here. Just wanted you to know that that's what it was. You aren't actually just hearing things. It is, in fact, the siren going off. All right. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you share it with people. Again, I'm going to put a, a link in the description box below to each of these sections so that you can just skip around and go back to any particular piece that you are interested in. If you have different definitions from the ones I've used, put them in the comments below. As I said, this is an ongoing discussion. This, these are terms that are often in flux and people are using them different ways. If there's a term I missed, make sure you put that in the comments below. Share the video, like the video, let YouTube know that you're liking these. And uh, yeah, I think that's enough for today. This is Cindy signing off. <laughs>